Hi, I'm Dana. Before I dive into my story, please remember to like and subscribe for more. Now, let me take you through the whirlwind that was my wedding planning. The sun streamed through the curtains of our small, cozy apartment. Alex and I were sitting at the breakfast table, surrounded by wedding catalogs and color swatches. He looked up from a flower arrangement brochure, a big grin on his face. Can you believe it, Dana? In just a few weeks, you'll be walking down the aisle, Mrs. Alex Thompson, he said, his eyes sparkling with excitement. I smiled back, the joy bubbling inside me. I still can't get over how perfect everything is coming together. The venue, the dress, your tux. It's like a dream. It's our dream, Dana, and it's becoming a reality. Later that day, I visited my parents. They always had a way of making any place feel like home. As we sat in the living room, sipping tea, my mom's face turned serious. Dana, we need to talk to you about something important, she began, exchanging a glance with my dad. I set my cup down, a knot forming in my stomach. What's wrong? It's about your adoption, my dad said gently. My heart skipped a beat. Adoption? We wanted to wait for the right time to tell you, and with your wedding coming up, we thought you should know. You were adopted when you were just a baby, my mom explained, her voice full of love. I was speechless, processing the information. A whirlwind of emotions hit me, but through it all, I felt a profound sense of gratitude for the life they'd given me. I... I had no idea, but thank you. Thank you for everything. For being my parents, I managed to say, tears brimming in my eyes. We love you, Dana. That's never changed, and never will. That evening, I decided to share this new revelation with Alex. I found him in the living room, going over some guest list details. Alex, there's something I need to tell you, I started, my voice trembling slightly. He looked up, concern etching his face. What's wrong, Dana? Taking a deep breath, I said, I found out today that I was adopted. For a moment, Alex just stared at me, his expression unreadable. Then to my surprise, he chuckled. Is that all? Dana, I love you for who you are, not where you came from. This changes nothing, he said, pulling me into a warm embrace. I felt a wave of relief wash over me. Thank you, Alex. I was so worried about how you'd take it. You don't have to worry about anything. Now let's get back to our wedding planning. We have a big day ahead of us. The following week, we had dinner with Alex's family. I had always felt a bit out of place with them. But that night, the atmosphere was even more strained. After dinner, while we were having coffee in the living room, Alex's mother, Mrs. Thompson, brought up our wedding preparations. So, Dana, how are the wedding plans coming along? She asked with a polite smile. They're going great, Mrs. Thompson. Everything's almost ready, I replied, trying to sound cheerful. So, Dana, Alex tells us you're adopted. Mrs. Thompson's voice cut through the silence, sharp and cold. I nodded, feeling my throat tighten. Yes, I recently found out myself. It was a surprise, but it doesn't change who I am. It's not about who you are, Dana. It's about family lineage. These things matter to us, to our friends and the society we belong to. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Doesn't love and commitment matter more than lineage? We live in a real world, Dana, where these things have implications. You must understand. I looked at Alex, hoping for some support. He was staring at his hands, looking torn. Mrs. Thompson continued. We've decided it would be best to call off the wedding. It's for the best, for both our families. My heart sank. Call off the wedding? But Alex and I love each other. It's not just about love. Mom, Dad, can't we discuss this? Alex finally spoke, his voice shaky. There's nothing to discuss, Alex. It's decided, Mrs. Thompson said sternly. I felt a mix of anger and sadness boiling inside me. How can you just decide our future like this? Alex, tell them. Tell them how much we love each other. Alex looked up, his eyes meeting mine, then looked away. Dana, maybe they have a point. We should think about this more. I was stunned. Alex, you can't be serious. Are you saying you agree with them? He wouldn't meet my gaze. It's complicated, Dana. I need time to think. Tears stung my eyes. I stood up, feeling the room spin around me. I need to leave. This is too much. As I walked to the door, Mrs. Thompson called out, Dana, you're a nice girl, but this is about more than just you and Alex. I didn't turn back, 
Stepping outside, the cold air hit me like a slap. I felt betrayed, not just by Alex, but by the idea of a family I thought I was joining. Driving home, the streets were a blur through my tears. Everything felt like a bad dream. I replayed the conversation in my head, Alex's silence echoing louder than any words. Once home, I lay on my bed, staring at the ceiling. The room was filled with wedding decorations, now a painful reminder of what could have been. I picked up my phone, half expecting, half hoping for a message from Alex, but there was nothing. That night, I couldn't sleep. The words, the looks, Alex's reluctance, it all circled in my mind. The man I loved, the man I was about to marry, was he just a part of this cruel charade? The next morning, there was still no word from Alex. I sent him a text. We need to talk, please. Hours passed. No reply. The silence was deafening. It was clear. His family's prejudices, their concern for lineage and status, it weighed more to him than our relationship. I realized then, it wasn't just the wedding that was called off. It was us, our future, everything we had dreamed of together. Feeling hollow, my phone finally buzzed. It was Alex. We need to talk, his message read, but it was too late. The hurt was too deep, the betrayal too real. I replied, there's nothing left to say, Alex, goodbye. And with that, I closed a painful chapter of my life, not realizing it was the beginning of something even bigger, a path that would lead me to truths I never imagined. After a few weeks, dragging my feet into the bridal shop with the wedding dress in tow, my heart was heavy. The shop was busy, buzzing with excited brides and their families. I made my way to the counter, trying to hold back tears. As I waited for the manager, I overheard a conversation that made me freeze in my tracks. And make sure everything is perfect for the Thompson wedding. It's a big deal. Alex Thompson is marrying the mayor's daughter. I couldn't believe my ears. Alex? Marrying someone else? My mind raced as I pieced things together. I forced a smile. Excuse me, did you just say Alex Thompson? Yes, it's a high-profile wedding. Such a lovely couple. A lump formed in my throat. I needed to know more. When is this wedding? In two weeks. They've been planning it for months, she replied, oblivious to the storm brewing inside me. I thanked her and walked out, my mind spinning. How could Alex do this? And his family, were they all in on it? I knew I had to find out more. I did some digging and found out the name of the other bride, Emily Harrison, the mayor's daughter. My heart sank. They were a powerful family. I managed to track down Emily. Meeting her wasn't easy, but I had to do it. We met in a quiet cafe, away from prying eyes. As I sat across from her, I saw a reflection of my own excitement and joy, the kind I had felt weeks ago. Emily, there's something you need to know about Alex, I started, my voice shaking. She looked at me, confused. Do I know you? No, but I know Alex. We were engaged until recently. He broke it off because of... family issues. Her expression turned from confusion to shock. Engaged? But he told me... He lied, Emily. And his family is in on it. They wanted him to marry someone. More influential. Emily's eyes filled with tears. I can't believe this. How could he? I showed her the texts, the pictures... Everything I had to prove my story. Seeing her face, it was like looking at my own pain mirrored back at me. We talked for what felt like hours, sharing our stories, our dreams that were now shattered. Emily was just as much a victim as I was. I left the cafe with a mix of emotions. There was relief in knowing the truth, but a deep sense of betrayal lingered. That night, I lay in bed, thinking about everything that had happened. Alex and his family's deceit, the lies, the manipulation. It was all a game to them, and I was just a pawn. As I drifted to sleep, a plan started to form in my mind. Alex and his family needed to be exposed. They couldn't just get away with this. The next day, I started my plan. I reached out to some contacts I had made during the wedding planning, gathering as much information as I could. I found out that Alex and his family were planning a big engagement announcement party for him and Emily. That was it. That was my chance. I called Emily. We need to show them they can't play with people's lives. Are you in? Her voice was resolute when she answered. Yes, they need to be stopped. We devised a plan to crash the party, to expose Alex in front of everyone. It was risky, 
but I was beyond caring about risks. The night of the party arrived. My heart was pounding as I walked into the lavish hall, Emily by my side. The room was filled with the city's elite, all there to celebrate Alex's engagement. We found Alex, standing on the stage, about to make his announcement. That's when we made our move. Alex Thompson, did you really think you could play us both? I shouted, my voice echoing through the hall. The room fell silent, all eyes on us. Alex's face turned white as a sheet. This man was engaged to me just weeks ago, I continued, holding up our engagement photo for all to see. Emily stepped forward. And he lied to me, claiming he was single. We were both deceived. The whispers in the room grew louder, the shock on everyone's faces evident. Alex tried to speak, but his words were drowned out by the murmurs of the crowd. His parents, standing at the back, looked horrified. Their perfect plan, their perfect family image, was crumbling before their eyes. The mayor, Emily's father, stepped up. The look of anger and betrayal on his face was something I'd never forget. You'll pay for this, Alex. You and your family. Walking out of that hall, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. I had exposed the truth, and in doing so, I had taken the first step towards my own healing. The morning after the party, I was on a mission. The sting of betrayal still fresh, I was fueled by a need for justice. I started by gathering every piece of evidence I had of Alex's deception. Texts, emails, photos, everything. Later that day, I met up with Emily at a coffee shop. She looked determined, a stark contrast to the tearful woman I met days ago. We can't let them get away with this, Dana. I agree. We need a plan. Something that will hit them where it hurts. We brainstormed ideas, each one bolder than the last. Finally, we settled on a plan. We would expose Alex and his family publicly, showing the world their true colors. But first, I wanted Alex to face me. I needed him to see the consequences of his actions. That evening, I called Alex. He picked up on the second ring. Dana, I... I've been meaning to call you. Save it, Alex. I want to meet. Tomorrow, at our place. Be there. There was a pause, then a soft, Okay, I'll be there. The next day, at the apartment we once shared, the memories were overwhelming. But I pushed them aside as Alex walked in. He looked at me, his eyes full of regret. Dana, I can explain. There's nothing to explain, Alex. I know everything. Why, Alex? Why did you do this? It's complicated, Dana. My family, their expectations, the pressure. So you decided to live a lie? And drag me into it? He looked down, unable to meet my gaze. I didn't know how to get out of it. I never meant to hurt you. I felt a bitter laugh escape my lips. But you did, Alex. You and your family. I showed him the evidence I had collected. I'm exposing you, Alex. And your family. Everyone will know the truth. His face went pale. Dana, please, think about this. You're hurt. Angry. I'm beyond hurt and angry, Alex. I want justice. Leaving him standing there, I walked out. There was no turning back now. Emily and I put our plan into action. We reached out to local news outlets, sharing our story and the evidence. It didn't take long for it to catch fire. The news spread like wildfire, and soon the Thompsons were at the center of a scandal. Their social standing, their reputation, it all began to crumble. But we didn't stop there. We organized a press conference, inviting everyone who was anyone in the city. Standing in front of the cameras, with Emily beside me, I told my story. How Alex and his family deceived me. The truth about their views on adoption. Everything. The reporters bombarded us with questions, each one more probing than the last. But we stood our ground, our words ringing out for all to hear. By the end of the day, our story was everywhere. Social media, news channels, newspapers. The Thompsons were exposed for the world to see. I watched the news that night, seeing Alex and his family's faces plastered across the screen. There was no sympathy in me, only a sense of closure. In the days that followed, the Thompsons tried to do damage control, but it was too late. Their image was tarnished, their social circle shrinking. And as for Alex, he tried to reach out, to apologize, to explain. But I was done listening. I blocked his number, his emails, everything. He was a chapter in my life that I had firmly closed. Through it all, Emily and I became close friends bonded by our shared experience. 
We were two women who had been wronged, but instead of being broken, we came out stronger. The plan had worked. I had exposed Alex and his family, but more importantly, I had reclaimed my voice, my power. It was the end of a painful chapter, but the beginning of a new, stronger me. In the days that followed, I found solace in my own family's support. My parents, ever loving and understanding, were my rock. And as for me, I came out of this stronger, more resilient. I learned that the truth, no matter how hard, is always worth fighting for. My story isn't just about betrayal and deceit. It's about standing up for yourself, about finding strength in the toughest times. And to anyone out there going through something similar, remember this. You're stronger than you think, and the truth will always find a way. And that's the end of my story. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe for more. Thanks for listening, and remember, always stand up for yourself. That's the end of Dana's story, folks. Now, here's a thought-provoking question for you. Do you think Dana did the right thing by publicly exposing Alex and his family? Or should she have handled it differently? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and let's get a conversation going. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for being part of our journey.